This is Larry Jordan. In this tutorial, I want to talk about mood mapping. Mood mapping is the ability to control the sound of your music by adjusting instrument groups. Here, I've loaded a piece of video into Scoring Edition and I've added some music for it. Notice it's a little bit small in the timeline. I could adjust the size by using the zoom slider, but a faster way to work is just to type Shift Z or Shift Z, depending upon where in the world you get your alphabet. Shift Z scales your music to fit inside the timeline window. Now when I play this, it would be nice rather than just have to drop the volume to see if I could knock out a couple of instruments and change the actual sound of the music. Well that's what mood mapping does and we do mood mapping with markers, specifically these three markers. This allows us to set a mood marker or a keyframe. This moves us to the previous mood keyframe and the next mood keyframe. Let's find the spot where our couple appear on screen and we'll just grab here and drag until we see them right there just as that dissolve starts I'm going to set a marker then I'm going to play a little bit further okay right there we've got a a shot of some surfers and I want to find the spot where that shot change occurs right there and set another mood keyframe then I'm going to scroll I'm going to scroll forward until I find the spot where we see the logo for the water channel appear right there right in all those bubbles and we'll set another keyframe so what I've just done is I've divided my music into four sections I'm going to click on this first section and I'm going to listen to it. Just hit the return key, rewind. It's a little heavy. I like the energy, but I don't like the weight. So let's go over to the properties and change the mood from full, meaning all the instruments playing, and you can see that everybody, all the tracks are up to their full level. Let's change this instead to, well, let's change it to drums and bass, just to get that percussion going. Notice that my synth channels and guitar and scratches all went to zero. Now when we play this, It's got the drive, but it doesn't have the overwhelming sound that it had before. Let's click on this next one. Again, full is all tracks up. A really good one to use when you've got people on camera talking is to change the mix to dialogue. It drops the sound down. Notice that the levels are decreased, making it easier for us to hear the couple talking. Now I'm not worried about the final mix because what I'm ultimately going to do is export this this sound over to my my video editing package and mix it there. So the fact that they are a little soft and the music's a little hot, that's all going to get fixed in the final mix. Let's do one more thing. Let's click here. Instead of having it be full, let's let's get a, a more open sound. Let's set this to this mood here. Notice it's got drums, but we kick out the synth and we definitely take out the bass so that weight is gone. It's got more of a light, airy feeling. And let's see if we can hear the change occur. Okay, cool. Let's try one more thing. Let's set this last section and change it back to dialogue. But in this particular case, look at what happens at the end. Now, hear that, that thrumming right there. She's done talking before it occurs. I really want to emphasize that. So I'm going to grab my scratch track, and I'm going to customize the mix by dragging this up full so our scratches hit much louder. I can customize the mix. Not only have to work with, with what smart sound is designed, I can create my own. Listen now. Surf's up on the water channel. <laughs> Now we're starting to really customize this music. I've got the same theme, but I've totally changed the sound depending upon whether it's up full or people are talking. Here I've got another problem. Each one of these changes in mood has a transition time, and by default the transition time, for instance going into this section, my transition time is two seconds. If we listen to it, it does a two second transition from one, one mix to the next. 
It would sound better if that transition time was, was instantaneous. So I'm going to drag this and make it a lot shorter. So it cuts to the different sound. Travel for the chance to compete with the world's best. We've got a cut going from the couple. We've got a cut going to the sound. Let's do something else. I look at this and, and we hit a still frame right here. Right there. Let's find using our left and right arrow keys. Let's find the instant where that still frame starts and let's add a hit file. And in that hit file, it adds a new track and it adds a cymbal crash. I don't want a cymbal crash. I'm going to go to uh, impacts and I'm going to say hit swell. And now listen to what happens now that I've got that hit in there. Let's try one more. Just as he hits the water. Right there. Right there. We're going to add another hit, add a hit file, and it'll go to impacts and laser hit. Okay, let's listen to it one more time. Very cool. That's the power of mood mapping. If we twirl down our mood display here, we can see all the different elements that we're working with. And if we wanted to, instead of having to adjust it over here in the Properties tab, I can make adjustments to the audio by clicking on the blue mountain range here. And now I've got the ability to add keyframes for each one of these tracks. So you can either use the, the Properties menu, or you can add your own volume tracks simply by adding keyframes. Whichever you decide to use, whether you're going to work in the Properties tab or add volume controls and keyframes inside the mood mapping window, the power to control the sound of your music is extraordinary. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching.